Hey, bud. I'm ready to leave. Hello? Who's this? I need a ride for the party. From what party? Who are you? Ugh, stop being annoying. And now I'm wasted. And you agreed to be a designated driver tonight. Designated driver? I never signed up for that. What do you mean? Either tell me who you are this minute, or I'm blocking your number. Haha, <laughs> <laughs> very funny. I love that you're a joke. Now can you come and pick me up? This isn't a joke. Who are you? Michael Smith. No way! This is some kind of a joke. Oh, but it isn't. Where do you work? What is this, 20 questions? Be serious, I need a ride. Just answer the question. HRM firm. Happy now. Where do you say you're at again? 37 Madison Street. But you already knew this. Just wait right there. I'll be there as fast as I can. You wouldn't believe what happened last night. What happened? Also, you know it's office hours, so we shouldn't be on our phones right now. I know, I know, but I can't keep it in much longer. Okay, spill. I'm listening. Besides, it will soon be lunch break. I got a text from Michael the last night. Michael who? Michael Smith. <sighs> no way! Michael Smith? The hottest guy in the office? Yes, that Michael. Tell me more. Every single detail. So, I was lying in bed late last night when I got a text from an unknown number. That unknown number turns out to be Michael Smith. Yeah, the handsome guy from the marketing team. He was drunk last night and sent me a text thinking I was someone else. Wow, he just slid into your DM like that? That's not even the bizarre part. Now you've got my full attention. He was totally wasted, so I drove him home and ensured he got into his home safely before I drove off. And right before he closed the door behind him, he said, Thank you, Rachel. He knows my name! How does he know my name? He knows your name? Wow, how does he know? You're asking me? I don't know! But I love the fact that he knows my name. Uh, I gotta go now. The project manager just walked in, and it's still a whole half an hour before break time. I don't want to get queried. You're right. Text me later. Thank you so much for what you did last night. Oh, <laughs> it's no big deal. I would have done what anyone in my shoes would have. Even despite how rude I was, I thought I was texting someone else. But that still doesn't excuse my behavior, and for that, I'm deeply sorry. It's fine, Michael. But still, let me take you out and buy you dinner. It's the least I can do. You don't have to. I know, but I want to, and I insist. Alright then. How about I pick you up after work, and we can eat dinner at the new restaurant that opened downtown. See you at 7. It's a date. Hey, Rach. Are you ready to leave now? It's past 7. Oh. I'm sorry, it slipped my mind to inform you. Michael invited me out to dinner to thank me for what I did yesterday. Oh, I see. Have fun, I guess. I will thank you. And I will tell you all about it once I get home. Don't stay out too late. Okay, Mom. I just got back home. At past 10? Don't you know that proper girls don't stay out this late? Or you don't wish to find a husband? That's a bit too much, don't you think? It just clocked 10 like 10 minutes ago. Stop making a big deal out of this, mommy. I'm just looking out for you, but I'll keep my concerns to myself. Anyways, how was the date? I'm sure Michael didn't take you to any place nice. It doesn't look like he knows how to treat a woman. He knows how to treat a woman. Looks can be deceiving. He was really sweet and charming at dinner. He held the doors open for me, pulled my seat back for me to sit, and even held a decent conversation all through dinner. And he knows his wine, because the wine he chose accompanied dinner perfectly. Oh, that's good. I'm happy for you. I have to go to bed now. You know, it's late and I have to resume early. Get some sleep, okay? Okay, good night. Good morning, beautiful. Stop with all the pet names, focus your attention on your wife, Kelvin. Oh, why are you being so uptight? I'm not being uptight. You are married. 
That marriage means nothing to me. I still love you. The days when we used to date are over, Calvin. Please move on. I can, and you know that. That's none of my concerns right now. Just stop texting me. You're married to my best friend, and that's it. Final. Baby? Rachel? Hey. Hi. How are you? I'm fine. Just tired. Calvin hasn't been home in a few days, and I'm starting to get worried. How so? He hardly picks my calls, and even when he texts, he's always in a hurry. Perhaps he's just busy with work? Don't think too much about it. How can I not? He isn't even home these days. It could just be work. Try to text him more often. Maybe that would help. I will. See you at the office. See you soon. I haven't seen or heard from you in over a week. All because of Michael. Is this how you forgive best friends because of one man? It's not that. I've also been busy with work. Plus, I knew Calvin was back from his business trip, and I wanted to give you both some privacy. Excuses upon excuses. Anyways, how are ya? I'm great. Michael has been taking you good care of me. How? We've been going out every day for the past week, and each day, it's a different location. Last night, he took me to the movies and rented the whole theater. Did you know Michael had that much money? Because I didn't. He takes me shopping and never hesitates to spend on me. Mm, that's nice, but be careful so you don't get tagged as a gold digger. What do you mean? People might begin to think that you're only with him for his money. Why would you say something like that? I, I didn't mean it that way. You're being too sensitive. I'm just advising you to check carefully. I've got to go. Michael just sent me a text. He's here to pick me up. Be safe. I will be. Who is Michael? No one that concerns you, and how do you know Michael? How else would I know? Sarah keeps telling me of your unruly behavior lately. So, this is who you are truly? I don't think you have the moral compass to be assessing my behavior, seeing as you have anything but faithful to your wife. Don't bring my martial life into this. I could say the same. Don't bring my personal life into this. To think you dare to barge into my DM and speak to me in this manner? I have let this go on for far too long. Rachel, you know I'm still in love with you. I will give you the whole world, so why are you still so adamant? We've dated before and we were happy. We can have that again. That's we are mistaken. We've dated a long time ago, before you chose to marry my best friend. She was the one who came after me and not the other way around. I keep trying to warn you that she doesn't have your best interests at heart, but you never listen. Don't talk bad about my best friend. All she has ever done is shown me love and care, while you on the other hand, have not. So please stop all this crap and face your wife. She loves you. She only got with me to prove a point to you that she was just as pretty and could get any guy. Haven't you noticed how she always dates your ex? Stop it, you're reading into things that don't have any connections. I have to go to bed now. Hi, baby girl. Hi. How are you? I'm really stressed. Been going through a lot lately. I understand. Would you like me to give you a massage? No, that won't be necessary. Are you sure? You know I could always make the time. You're such a sweetheart, and yes, I'm sure. Alright. Would you be able to make it for the company's weekly get-together tomorrow? I'm really tired and behind on my project this week, so I'm going to take the weekend to relax and unwind. Okay. I understand. I'm going to head back to work now. Take a good care of yourself, and don't hesitate to text me if you need anything. I will, darling. Take care. Hey, baby. Michael? I've been trying to call and text you. Why aren't you responding? Do you need a ride home? Say something. You're scaring me. Hello? Baby? What sort of twisted game are you playing at? This isn't a game. The contents of that video are real. You expect me to believe that? I wouldn't have any reason to lie to you. I recorded the video last night. 
You expect me to believe that what I saw in that video was Michael and Sarah sleeping together? Yes, it is. The company hangout was at the regular bar across the hotel on 5th Street. After the hangout, they went there. And that's how I got the video. Who are you, and why would you follow them? That's not the point. If you think I'm lying, then you can message your front desk and ask them. Hey, Sarah. Hi. You haven't sent me a text since the day of the hangout in the office. Is everything fine? You didn't get sick, did you? Oh, not at all. I've been great, actually. Splendid. You? I've been better. How was the hangout? Oh, it was a very eventful evening. How so? Oh, you don't need to know that. Okay, is Calvin back in town? He seemed very happy and he's usually the reason why you're in a good mood. No, he isn't in town yet. Let's just say I've found a new source of happiness. A new source? Okay. Do you want to grab some drinks later today? Alright, Jack. Um, today won't work for me. I've got other plans. Other plans? Yep, but we can meet up some other time. Sure, of course we can. Hey, baby. Hey. How are you? Feeling better? Not really. I was getting a bit worried you haven't texted me since the day of the hangout. I've just been busy. It's no big deal, right? Right. It's just something was wrong. No, no, nothing's wrong. Should we meet up after work today? Today? Oops, I'm busy. Can we schedule another day? Sure, we can. Great, let's talk later. Okay. I've been trying to get across to you for the past few weeks and you've hardly responded to any of my calls or texts. I've been really busy, but I'm here now. You know, my proposition still stands if you ever take up my offer. If we are going to do this, then your wife must never find out. We need to be very discreet about it. I cannot believe my eyes. Are you finally saying yes to me? Yes, I am. I've thought about it a lot, and what me and you shared was phenomenal. I want that back. We were very good to one another. And trust me, my wife will never find out. Like I said, we need to be very discreet about it all so she won't suspect a thing. I have to go now, but just meet me at the address that will text you in a few days. Hey. Hi. You hardly ever text me these days. I've been occupied dealing with other issues. I know you've been working hard, so let's meet up and have a girl's day. Just the two of us. Mm, I'm not sure I have time for this right now. Oh, come on, just this once. We haven't hung out in a while. Come on, please. Alright, alright. I'll make time. Let's say two days from now. Perfect. See you then. I'll text you the location. Hey, baby. Oh, how much I've missed this. Hello, baby. How are you? I'm fine. I was thinking we should meet up at a hotel hush. The one with the new nightclub. That would be perfect. We could first go to the club and then head upstairs to the hotel to have more fun. Exactly what I was thinking. So, you can meet me there tomorrow at 8. I'm already there. I can't wait to see you. Neither can I. Hi, so I found the perfect location for us to go to tomorrow night. Where is that? The one with the new raging nightclub. Oh, I've heard about that place. People say it's the best hotel club in town. Exactly why I chose it. <laughs> you know me well. Of course I do. Can we meet up at, let's say, 8? I'll be there. Hey, are you here? Of course I am. I just entered the room. When will you be here? Very soon. You can be a little bit patient with me, right? And also, remember to turn off the light. I wanted to be surprised when you see what I put on for you. You're getting me all excited. I will turn off the light and wait for you in bed. We can leave the clubbing for another day and just get right into it once you arrive. Sounds like a plan. I'm here. Perfect. Go to your room 29. That's where I am. Shouldn't we head to the club first? Of course we will, but first let's pregame. 
I would like that very much. When you open the door, the lights are off because I'm about to take a shower, but make yourself comfortable. Okay, see you soon. Baby, I'm very sorry. What happened? Michael, I trusted you. I, I was drunk and it just happened in the spur of the moment. I promised it didn't mean anything to me. You know me. I would never hurt you like this. I just wouldn't. You were drunk? Michael, please stop with the lies. You didn't stop seeing her after that night. Darling, please. I know I was wrong. I shouldn't have continued seeing her. I'm so sorry. But please, don't do this. This could end my career. You should have thought about that. I already emailed a video to the HR this morning. How could you do that? You should have thought about the consequences of sleeping with a co-worker. Rachel, I'm so sorry. What are you sorry for? Tell me. For... everything. Please, forgive me. You conniving shit. I trusted you. I was there for you through every single heartbreak. I got you this current position at HRM, and this is how you pay me for all the kindness I've shown you? I know what I did was wrong, and I deeply regret it, but please don't do this. You were never my friend. After all these years, I should have known. I should have seen the signs. My marriage is already on the verge of collapsing after Kelva and I found ourselves in that hotel room. I regret ever seeing Hai all those years ago. If I had just sat down on my own in that third grade science class, then we would never have known each other. The things I did for you. I even hit the fact that Calvin had been making passes at me because you were a friend. I see I'm the wrong one here. Can you please forgive me? My job at the HRM is all I have. It's too late for all that now. I already sent the mail to the HR this morning. So you can piss your position goodbye. I was glad I had moved on from all that drama. Sarah and Michael were fired this next morning and blacklisted from all the companies in the city. Kelvin and Sarah's marriage were broken beyond repair. Yet, none of them went to divorce and mending things is impossible. I had found out that the unknown caller that night was Kelvin. He was hurt by what Sarah had been doing and also wanted to trick me into sleeping with him. No one wanted to hire them after what had happened. For the first month, Michael was always calling and texting to apologize. But I could see through his act. He wasn't sorry at all. I gotta find out that Michael was a playboy and had slept with most of the women in the marketing department, but threatened them into keeping silent once he broke up with them abruptly. Six months after all that and I'm seeing a guy named Tom. He's very smart and caring, and those are two qualities that I cherish in a man. I haven't spoken to either Sarah, Michael, or Calvin in a long while and I wish them all the best. But as far as I go, I am happy with Tom. Sarah still leaves text, profusingly apologizing, but I had to shut that chapter of my life. Do you have time to talk now? Is something wrong? Don't you think my salary is a little low? It seems pretty strange to me. You know I'm a college graduate, not a high school graduate, right? Do you even know what college graduate means? It means I went to school after high school. I know you're just a high school graduate, Keith, and that you're my boss, but isn't it weird that you have a higher salary than me? No, you just joined the company, and you're working in a position below me. We've been working at the company for different lengths of time, and hold different positions. So I don't think it's weird at all. I don't know, man. How come me, a college graduate, is making less than my boss who's only graduated from high school? Don't you think you're going a little too far with these irrational claims? You're saying that your salary is low, but you haven't even been in the company for half a year. That's why I'm telling you that this is strange. It's not fair. All salary talk aside, can you really say for yourself that you've been getting the job done well? Even when you still have your assigned tasks to do, you just outright leave the company when the clock hits 5. You make other people do your work, and refuse to do stuff you don't want to do. Not only do you miss deadlines, but you blame it on me. Do you think this is how a working adult should act? I can't believe you're treating me this way. Are you even listening to me? How am I treating you poorly? If anything, you should respect the fact that this company continues to pay you despite you sitting around playing on your phone all day at work. 
I'm a specially selected employee of this company, so this kind of treatment is uncalled for. There has to be a mistake, since I have more skill than you. Okay, I get it. Just calm down. I'm a great employee to have. I said I get it. You better listen to everything that I have to say. Keep it together, man. Do you hear me? After working for three months, a new employee's salary won't just suddenly increase. What? But I'm a college graduate. You keep bragging about being a college graduate, but most of our new employees this year are college graduates too. So there's nothing really to brag about. But I'm different. Really? How so? I knew that I was different when I joined this company for the first time and saw you as my boss. A boss with such a low level of education. What do you think saying that will do for you now? You know what? I should praise you for having the courage to be able to say that to my face. My honesty is my strength. Being honest and being inconsiderate of other people are not the same thing. Anyways, the fact that you're a college graduate doesn't matter. When you enter the real world, the ones who work diligently gain recognition. And since you just joined the company, you have no right to complain about your salary. I do have the right to complain. Look, you joined the company knowing fully well what you were getting paid. More importantly, if you want to demand something from the company, then you need to show good results first. Shouldn't you be more concerned with improving on your work performance? Aren't you just a high school graduate, Keith? What does that have to do with anything? Someone like you lecturing me isn't very convincing. A boss with a low level of education is the absolute worst. Everyone on social media agrees with me. I don't know what you're talking about, but stop spreading stuff about the company or other people on social media. You're really lame for a high school graduate. Well, since I have an actual degree, I don't have to work as hard as you. I should still get a raise. So there's really no point in me trying hard to win over anyone. <laughs> Do you really think it's okay to work with that kind of attitude? Is that why you're so busy every day at your desk just playing on your phone? That's because I'm an Instagram influencer. I'm really good at taking my boring everyday life and making it look colorful on social media. That's cringy. What? You should first learn how to work hard and show good results. Then you can gain approval from others. That's the order in which I think things should go. But with a salary like this, I have absolutely no motivation. That's why if you raise my salary a significant amount, then I might seriously work hard. <sighs> How can you be so positive yet so delusional? It's great that you're a college graduate, but do you have anything to show for since joining the company? That's why I'm telling you, even if my results are not up to your standard, my salary is way too low. Not only do you not produce good results, but you don't get any work done at all. You refuse to take my advice. So when you demand that I raise your salary... So can you raise my salary this month or not? At the very least, you should pay me more than whatever you make. Hey, are you even listening? Hey, Keith, still? Huh? What is this about? My salary. It didn't go up this month. You're my boss, right? Why didn't you do anything for me? I thought we were already done discussing this. No, we're not. You said you would raise my salary, remember? Why didn't my salary increase? What happened after we talked? Did you even try doing anything for me? Just as I said before, you need to work harder first. No, no, no. If you don't fix things, then I'm going to quit. Why would I listen to a boss that doesn't even have a proper degree? I'm seriously going to quit if you don't make my salary higher than yours. Okay, then you'll have to resign. What? What are you saying? You want to quit, right? It won't really affect us either, so do as you please. 
If you decide that you want to resign, then I'll actually talk to the higher-ups this time around. Wait, you're joking, right? You would never say something like that seriously, right? Why would I be joking? You don't have the authority to do that. Don't act so high and mighty, you high school graduate. <laughs> so poorly educated. You're right that I don't have a role in HR, but I'm different than you because I actually produce good results. That's why I've built myself a reputation and have earned trust within the company. Even the higher-ups like me. I've been recognized as having a good discerning eye for people. Hold on a second. What? I'll report you for your poor work ethic. It'll be easy enough to end your contract since you're newly employed and still in your trial phase. This is a joke, right? You're not being serious, right? You would never actually fire me. Unlike some nobody who boasts about his education yet slacks on his work, I actually work hard. It's my job to make a thorough report to the higher-ups on new employees. Wait a second. There's no way you would... Do you understand now how important it is to produce good results? You say you're a college graduate, yet you do nothing and complain all the time. There's no use in demanding for a pay raise. Shut up. I already told you that whatever a high school graduate like you says holds no weight. I'm more skilled than you. If you can fire me, then try. You'll regret it. I don't think I will, though. How come I have to deal with this type of mistreatment even though I'm a college graduate? It never said that I would have to listen to the rude remarks made by a high school graduate in my job description. I could say the same. Babysitting a lazy employee is not part of my duties. You've got to be kidding me. I'll tell you straight up. If you're being treated poorly, it's for a reason other than you being a college graduate. It's because you don't take your work seriously. It's nothing more and nothing less than that. Well, work hard at your next job and learn from the mistakes that you've made here. Wait, hold on a second. Why does that sound like a farewell statement? My next job? What do you mean? Are you giving up on finding a job already? You'll be leaving the company, so why don't you start looking for a new job? <laughs> no, no, no. First of all, I'm not quitting. Especially after I just got accepted into this company. This is the only company I got a job offer from after applying to over a hundred others. So there's no way I can quit. If that's the case, then you should have worked more sincerely. Why are you speaking so coldly to me? You're not serious about firing me, right? You're my superior, Keith. Don't leave me behind. I'm sorry, but I've already reported you. By the way, all the documents that you didn't submit on time really bothered the people around you. After you would leave work early, all the employees had to split up doing the work you hadn't finished. Wait, really? I had no idea. I've told you several times. But I, I might not have been listening closely. Please, give me another chance. Another chance? Please, give me a chance to show my good side. I'll prove to you that I can get things done if I try. That spirit is great, but you haven't shown me that sort of attitude the whole three months you've been working here. I only remember you hiding away at your desk playing on your phone. I'll do things right this time, so please let me stay in the company. I just graduated from college, so I'm only a new grad. Can't you please just give me one more chance? Oh, are you being serious now? What? Are you willing to swear that you will seriously dedicate yourself to the company and work hard? Of course, I will. I'll work so hard that you'll think I'm a different person. Please, give me a chance to show my growth. It's a shame that I won't be able to see that. Well, if that's how you feel now, then you'll be fine at your next job. I won't be able to look after you anymore, but good luck. Are you really going to fire me? Well, if I were to believe you, I could go out and negotiate with the higher-ups to get you to stay in the company. But unfortunately, I also plan on leaving this company. 
so I don't think my opinion will hold much value any longer. What are you talking about? Well, even if I hadn't reported you, everyone knows about your poor work ethic. It didn't seem likely that we would continue to employ you after your trial phase ended anyways. Are you planning on getting me involved in your mess, since you're getting fired? It seems like you don't comprehend anything I say, so there's no point in me even talking to you any further. And I'm not getting fired, I just plan on moving on to different things. But you're quitting, right? That must mean... You're getting fired because you're a high school graduate. What a shame. Why are you even still trying? I don't hate that about you because it proves you're a person with real feelings, but your unemployment has already been decided. Shouldn't you start finding a new job now? No, there's no way I could do that. This was so unexpected. It puts me in a really tough position. I've only just joined the company. You shouldn't have taken things so easily just because you got the job. Keith, please. You leaving the company is your decision. But don't bring me down with you. You and my resignation from the company have nothing to do with each other. And I'm not getting fired. Please, negotiate with the higher-ups. Didn't you say that you're well-liked by your boss? Well, it's not my responsibility to do such a thing. Shouldn't you just give up on this company? Whatever happens, someone who doesn't work hard unless they get a raise should definitely be fired in my books. Well, it will only be a few more days, but let's make these final days pleasant. Jaden was officially told by the company that he would be let go. He was ruthlessly lectured on his lack of work ethic, and was told to pick up his things and leave. He got mad and went back to the company looking for Keith, but by then Keith had already quit, joined a new company, and become more independent. Jaden made a big fuss looking for Keith, so they called the authorities, and he ended up being dragged away by the police. Not only did he get fired, but it seems as though this was a hit that he couldn't recover from. Hopefully he can try to get his life back together.